Welcome to today's Icelandic National League of the United States presentation. I'm Rob Olison, your host for this program, and I'm also happy that you are joining us today. Our program focuses on a subject Iceland is famous for throughout the world, volcanoes. We will learn how Iceland gained this notoriety from an Icelandic citizen, journalist, videographer, and popular YouTube channel creator. You're in for a treat as he shares his amazing photography and his up-close observations of the latest geologic activity. This webinar is part of the INL US mission to provide programs, classes, and other offerings that create a connection point for Icelanders, people of Icelandic descent, and those interested in Iceland. Information on the INL US can be found on our social media sites, our blog, and our website at inlus.org. If you're already a member of the INL US, we thank you. If you're not a member, I encourage you to join. Your membership helps fund scholarships, grants, local projects, Icelandic language classes, and other initiatives. Before we get started, a couple of reminders. This program is approximately one hour in length and is being recorded. The recording will be available through the INL US website. As attendees to this program, you are muted. However, we welcome questions and will answer as many as possible in the program. To ask a question, please click the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you are on a phone or a tablet, the button may be in the upper right corner or you may need to swipe to find it. So let me introduce today's guest. He's the creator and principal videographer of the popular YouTube channel called Just Icelandic which now has over 30,000 subscribers. Gilfi Gilfison is a genial host on the channel, narrating his video reports with humor, wry observation, and a willingness to ask some difficult questions. Whether it is a man in the street viewpoint or an overhead drone video, Gilfi keeps his focus on capturing the story and giving his viewers a clear picture. While he covers many aspects of Iceland and its cities and inhabitants, he has placed a strong emphasis on covering the recent geologic activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula. To date, he has posted over 125 video reports on that activity. Gilfi, welcome to the program. Could you begin you. by giving us some background on why volcanic activity is such a dominant feature of Iceland? Well, Iceland is, in, thank you for the intro, and Iceland is in fact just uh, the part of the mid-Atlantic grid that happens to be above sea level. So that's a, that, that is a unique feature of its own, and uh, I don't think it can be seen elsewhere in the world. And uh, Iceland sits on the plate boundaries, so the country is uh, being constantly torn apart by a centimeter each direction and uh, filter, then the volcanoes take care of filling up the gaps. So volcanic activity in Iceland will never cease to exist. This is a volcanic island and it will always be. And, and, and uh, we can say that uh, this is, uh, uh, yes, this, I, this is the simple, simple, simple version that uh, we have been ripped apart and then they fill up the gaps. So, but what about uh, photos? Should we move into, do we want me to uh, throw up a map? Yeah, that would be very helpful to help us understand this. Yeah. So, I'm going to start with this one here. And uh, what we have here is the Reykjanes Peninsula. And uh, there are volcanic systems, five, six volcanic systems there. Uh, our experts. Now, I am not a geologist, uh, but I listen a lot. To them. And they don't agree upon how many volcanic systems there are on the peninsula. 
some say six, some say four. Uh, I think it's a bit up to how they define them. But uh, what we are looking at are uh, in the red colors, we see the volcanic systems as uh, most of them define them. And then the seismic zone, zone that runs through the, through the peninsula and uh, is constantly moving it. So the, so the, uh, so the tension there is uh, always present. And uh, if you look at the middle of the picture where we see Lake uh, Kleivarvat. So here we have the volcanic systems and the seismic zone that runs uh, through the peninsula. And uh, we can see names as the Blue Lagoon uh, on the westernmost part of the peninsula, nearby Grindavík. Uh, it sits mid on a seismic zone, and that is where the action is now. But uh, I want to go to another picture that is uh, a bit... This is where it all starts. This is the westernmost part of the peninsula. I was there just the other day. And uh, here we have a pretty good view of the plate boundaries as they rise up from the seabed. So this is a pretty telling picture, as we say. It, uh, it shows uh, there aren't that many places in the world where you can see, see the plate boundaries so clearly. Uh, actually, Thinkvetler has been promoted a lot as uh, where you can see the the uh, plate boundaries uh, so well, but the thing is that uh, we have this, uh, we have our own tectonic plate, the middle plate. So the Thingvellir, uh, the Thingvellir Rift Valley isn't uh, quite as valid as a, as, a, as a sample of the plate boundaries. But this is more and less how they look, and those are at the westernmost, you see the map now? Yes, we do. Yeah. We are at the westernmost tip in the bottom left corner where that photo was shot the other day. And uh, this, uh, then we have, um, this is all large, so I, I'm, I really don't know where to start. <laughs> uh, but uh, what, uh, should we start with the uh, eruption in Keldingadalit? Or what? Um. Yes, if that would help you. Uh, yeah, I think I think, I think so. That Before we leave was, this screen, though, that, yeah, that big think, red stripe that's shooting towards Reykjavik, is that a concern for folks? Yes, that, I would not say yes, it is. And uh, that is the so-called uh, Krisuvik volcanic system. It's a huge system, and the fissure swarm from it, it stretches all the way into the city. And as uh, we were building a swimming pool uh, in uh, one of the areas there, um, we noticed that the, the builders noticed the, a fissure, so they moved the swimming pool and, and the parking lot is there. So Reykjavik isn't exactly located as well as uh, we would prefer these days. And uh, there are lava fields, if, you, if we are still by this, can you see my, uh, uh, can you see the, uh, yeah, we see the lava field here, by the middle of it. That's a lava field that uh, runs through a part of the greater Reykjavik uh, area. So we have been building on land that has been uh, four times under lava during historic times. So. Yes, there is, we might see troubles if this system takes off. And uh, if we go a bit uh, further down and we take a look at uh, where the uh, Krisvik hot springs are, uh, land uplift has been detected there uh, recently, after the Geldingadalir eruption came to an end. And uh, as we move a bit west again, we can say that by the Blue Lagoon, we have a mount called the Mount Thorbjörn, and the land uplift started there around, uh, it was over a year ago, so it all started by the Blue Lagoon. And uh, for a while, we uh, got ready to evacuate Grindavík, and, and preparations were made, 
Then this magma intrusion uh, started to uh, move from a Mount Caleb that you see in the middle of the peninsula. And a magma dike was formed during, I think it was one, two months it took it to break its way to Keltigandali, where it finally came up. And uh, that eruption lasted for four for months. But uh, what we are seeing now is that uh, land uplift started by the Blue Lagoon and Mount Thorbjörn like last year. And uh, we are now, you have this photo? Yes, we see the photo. Yeah, and uh, the situation now is that uh, by Mount Thorbjörn, by the roots of Mount Thorbjörn, we have this yellow line and it shows the magma dike that has been forming. And uh, we see that uh, our experts have been able to detect this through INSAR satellite data and GPS. And uh, what makes this different from last year is that uh, infrastructure and the whole town is at serious risk. So we see this magma dike being now uh, mostly bothering us by this amount ceiling of that to the left. And uh, most of the earthquakes happened there for the last days. So it seems as this intrusion is trying to break its way there. And there are few options in this uh, <clears throat> situation. If the magma would uh, find its way up nearby the power plant at Mount Thorbjörn, we are in a bit of a depression in the land there. So... I think it would be really little that we could do in order to rescue the, the power plant from there. But as we take a look at the road that runs between the mountains there and uh, into Grindavík, uh, there is a little hill there. So I think that uh, the town would be safe uh, if the magma would come up somewhere there. And also, if it uh, uh, would uh, bypass Mount Thorbjörn, but uh, here we have Grindavík, and I'm looking for the so-called Sundanjúka row of craters. And that would be a word that would be, for those of you who want to learn uh, a better Icelandic, uh, the ideal word. But we, there we have this row of craters, yeah, we have it here, to the right on the photo, we have Sundanjúka gígaröðin or the Sundanjúka row of craters and uh, those craters are around 2000 years old uh, or since this uh, lava com came from there and uh, as we ok, here we have good map Sundanjúka row of craters we say the red dots there and the blue lagoon again and the power plant and uh, we have the magma dike there, and you can see that we are not very far away from Faradarsfjall, where the eruption last year took place. This is Grindavík from the north, and you see that the Cape Hopsness, that is in front of us, is a cape that was formed like, I'm told, eight to 10,000 years ago from separate craters that I have not been able to, uh, to locate. But uh, I made this photo for a video that I made shortly ago. And uh, what I'm saying is that uh, this row of craters has been shaking all along. And I looked at it uh, with suspicion last year before the Keltigandal eruption because uh, I was thinking the whole time, yeah, it's going to come after there again. There is this old path there and it's going to come there. Uh, very likely. But then it came up in Keltigandal and uh, we are now at the same place that this row of crater is shaking like I don't know what. And uh, I just, uh, just an hour ago, I looked at the earthquake map for the last seven days and uh, I could see all the earthquakes, uh, like 80, 90 percent of the earthquakes for the last days, they line up around this row of craters. And what I've been speculating is 
from there the lava will take off because uh, the risk we face is that uh, if the lava will crawl down into the harbor, uh, it's over for the town. It is just as simple as that. This is a, this is just a, one one of the five harbors by the south coast and most likely the best one due to this lava field. But uh, nature gives and nature takes. So if lava would hit that harbor, uh, that would be more and less it for the town. So. And, uh Gilfi, you were saying earlier when we were talking to you that the town is a huge fishing town. Yeah, it is a home so, of 3,300 people. And uh, it is one of those um, lucky towns. Um, they have a good fishery quota and plenty, plenty of work and the town is growing. But they have lack of building land. So what they have been doing is to move the town further up here, if you can see it as a move the point there. Here. You can see, see the, yeah. So it, the town is almost up here. But uh, the thing is that we are only 800 meters away. And I want to try to find another one here. Okay, we are closer here. Let's use this one. So what we might, uh, we see here the most recent part of town. And the top crater from the crater row is just around here. And uh, I was thinking if, if you say worst case scenario, this old row of craters will wake up. Not perhaps not the crater, the old craters themselves, but the eruption would take place, uh, well, pretty much beside it, or, or, or yeah, that, that, is, that is where the earthquakes are now. The thing is that the fissure swarm from this old crater, it stretches all the way through the town. So if it would get a lot of earthquakes, uh, I see it before me that uh, many houses could be damaged a lot because uh, they sit literally on top of that, uh, that uh, fissure swamp. But uh, the thing is that uh, we don't know where exactly this will come up. This might come up uh, kilometers away. This might even wake up again the Geltingadal eruption. Uh, which would be the best option. Uh, we might see the earthquakes travel further north, northeast, and the lava would take off to the north. Uh, we have good uh, tank there to, to hold it and, and no infrastructure. But uh, what worries us is that uh, this is taking place almost under an active power plant. And the Blue Lagoon, which is uh, not only Iceland's hottest tourist spot, it's a big workplace, a five-star hotel, and uh, they have built up uh, huge infrastructure there. And uh, it's badly located. And uh, so if the eruption would take place behind the mountain by the Blue Lagoon, by the Blue Lagoon we have this route here. And uh, there is a lava field running, uh, running here, but not all the way through town. And I think we might be able to do something about uh, an eruption that takes place behind the mountain, Mount Thorbjörn, uh, for the town. But I don't think we could do anything about the power plant and, and the Blue Lagoon because it's uh, just so close. But the thing is that there are so many options. So when the civil defense is going over those things now, my guess is that uh, they will have to 
line up uh, many scenarios um, as for a location. Location there, it will flow there, there to do this and such. So we can't pinpoint anything. Um, we have to just uh, hope that uh, they can evacuate the town fast. And uh, this photo here, we are at the southern part of town. And this fissure that I noticed on an old uh, aerial photo shortly before, I, shortly before my last visit to Grindavík, I thought, okay, what is this? So I went digging and uh, flew over there. And uh, this is a fi the fissure swarm that, uh, from this uh, Sundanhjúka row of craters that runs through town. So we are, this shows you how extremely active land this is, how broken it is, and uh, how poorly located the town is. But then, if we look back at, and like the question I've been getting, why did they build a town there? And the answer is indeed very simple. And it is the, it is the old, uh, uh, it is the old uh, lava field in front of us that made this harbor. And the south coast of Iceland is very rough. And uh, that's why we have so few harbors there. And uh, it, it would be terrible to lose this harbor. And uh, if you think about the irony of it, that uh, I think there are some 40, 50 houses in Grindavík who, are, who were built in 1973 or after the eruption in Westman Islands, where the five population of 5,000 there were uh, uh, evacuated, the islands were evacuated overnight, and uh, we built houses uh, in towns all around Iceland, and especially uh, Thorlosar and Grindavík, in order to get the fishing fleet, uh, to have, have facilities for the fishing fleet while, while it was going on. And if you look in a harbor, you can see this, this dock here. It was also built during this uh, the Westman Island eruption. So it is a bit ironic that uh, uh, people who are moved here from the Westman Islands in 73 uh, and uh, we are getting to ready to evacuate this town now. But uh, one of the questions I've been getting is uh, how dangerous can it be? And uh, there are actually four roads out of town, if you count the harbor in it, uh, to the west and east, and then the main road uh, that uh, runs past the, the Blue Lagoon, and an extra road that uh, is uh, at this side of Mount uh, Thorbjörn, and uh, so there are that in, as such, does not worry me when we have rescue helicopters and such. And I know that, uh, that uh, the civil defense has had a year to prepare. So I can only guess that they are more and less ready. But uh, what worries me is that uh, during the, before the Geldingadalir eruption last year, we got uh, huge earthquake swarms and Grindavík was shaking like, uh, shaking a lot. And, uh, and uh, then the earthquake came down and one of our experts said that, uh, yeah, this will turn into nothing. This is, you know, fading out. And uh, 24 hours later, the eruption in Geldingadalir started uh, nobody knew about it. The seismometers didn't show any readings at all. It was just the people in Grindavík that uh, looked out their windows that evening and, and saw the mountain glowing. And, uh, and uh, that was it. And uh, what worries me is that if there are soft layers there or uh, old fissures, that uh, the magma will find its path and easily uh, go up. 
So that uh, an eruption could uh, take place uh, very close by the town, especially in the northernmost houses that are newly built. So I am, I was in Grindavík just uh, like two days ago, shooting photos, and I have to admit, I, I did not feel it as a con as comfortable place as I used to. I have lived there. And uh, I don't know about what the people are saying in general. Uh, they got used to earthquakes and and uh, and uh, those are people who have seen see, seen different things and, and uh, I think they can handle it for the most part. But um, I know, however, for a fact that during this chapter, before the Celtic eruption, there were some people who just took off, called their friends and, and got some summer houses and such and said, I'm not staying. And uh, it would not surprise me if that would be the case, but we don't see as many earthquakes as before the Celtic eruption now. This pattern seems to be a bit different, but uh, when I'm listening to our experts, they seem to agree upon that uh, they expect an eruption to take place uh, in the fall. They are talking about, yeah, like August, September. Uh, but I think that uh, more or less anything goes there. All we need is... Uh, one strong earthquake, earthquake, some tectonic movements, and, and uh, those uh, channels, those old channels, uh, start to 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 pump up, and, and uh, it could be just a matter of days. But a silent eruption like we had in Keltingadale, that is what fears I fear the most now, and and I am seeing was seeing today that the earthquakes are actually moving close to the old eruption place and I thought yeah we might get to lucky and there might be some channel there between Mount Thorbjörn and the and the Keltingadalir eruption that we might be uh, we might see the eruption come up from uh, far away from town so we would get the so called uh, tourist eruption but uh, as for this area, our experts say that they mainly expect a small eruption, but uh, they have, however, confirmed that there is 1.4 million cubic kilometers of magma that have been detected through INSAR data. And as we look at this old uh, row of craters, uh, Sundanukar craters, we see that there are some mighty magma pumping machines under there. And uh, there are twen over 20 shield volcano formations on the peninsula, but shield volcanoes are those uh, silent uh, eruptions that go all the way to the mantle because there are no central volcanoes with magma chambers under the peninsula. This is all uh, very primitive uh, magma that's coming up from uh, long depth and as uh, our experts say that such eruption they can just go on for years and produce a huge amount of, of, of magma and uh, as I was starting to read <clears throat> about geology uh, those formations shield volcanoes were we somehow always looked at them as uh, an ancient uh, phenomena that uh, we would never see again. Just something that uh, uh, took part in forming the country and, and, and uh, we are over and done with that. But uh, the eruption in Keltkantala last year was such eruption and we have to keep in mind that it was extremely small eruption or as our expert described it as uh, pretty lame. So they expect more and uh, overall we are in this uh, 
they say that uh, the Reykjanes Peninsula, according to the lava layers, which we have plenty of, it goes in cycles. That uh, each cycle can go on for 150, 200 years. And uh, then we will get uh, 800 years, relatively calm. And uh, they have been saying uh, publicly for the last, uh, for as long as I remember about this thing, or maybe 20, 30 years, they have been saying the Reykjanes Peninsula is uh, on time. We might see it wake up someday. And when it wakes up, we are in for a long ride. And uh, what is... Uh, Happening is that uh, that forecast is coming through. The peninsula has awoken, meaning that we will get frequent eruptions uh, and earthquakes for the next 200 years. <laughs> wow. Um, Gilfi, I have a question that's come in from one of the viewers. And just a reminder, if anyone else has a question, you can use that Q&A button to list your question. But this question is uh, asking you what your opinion is th that when the eruption does come, do you think it will be violent eruption or will the lava flow more like at Gildinga Dollar? No, they don't. Uh, the eruptions on the peninsula aren't violent and they come without ash, mostly without ash. Uh, they predicted so, and that turned out to be, our expert predicted so, and that turned out to be right when it comes to Faradalsfjall. And uh, we did not, uh, even though Mount Faradalsfjall is only, uh, I think, 20, 30 kilometers, kilometers away from the capital of the so like airport, there were no delays. So we got very lucky with that. But, if an eruption takes place on the seabed, and if we, like when we look at this photo, the Eldwerk craters, which is a huge row of craters, and uh, the magma field from that one stretches, I think it's two or three kilometers out in the sea, and I read a uh, report the other day saying that uh, experts can't rule out that uh, the uh, Eldwerk eruption uh, or the craters there uh, stressed all the way into the sea. And if we go into statistics, we get an undersea eruptions uh, once in a century, on average on the peninsula. Uh, like, uh, like uh, uh, it not even many Icelanders know that uh, an island uh, of the Reykjanes Peninsula called Elde uh, is only from the 13th century or during the last uh, seismic chapter on the peninsula. So since then, there have been numerous eruptions on the sea reported by fishermen and such. The older ones were very unclear in many ways, but uh, uh, I think uh, that the, our experts on average, they say it's yeah, once, once every hundred years that, that we get such eruptions. And that is actually the case that we have earthquake swarms by the plate boundaries on the photo I just showed you. And that is, uh, was like 10, 15 kilometers offshore. And uh, they say, um, one of them said, the other day, a volcanologist said, that uh, we might even get such scenario, that we might see an undersea eruption, we might see two eruptions at different locations go on even. So he was more or less saying that uh, anything goes after this peninsula takes off. And uh, when you look at... Uh, if you look at this land above the outer craters, you can see all this, this uh, huge uh, fissure swarm, uh, even from a satellite photo. And uh, those who are uh, flying into, into Keplavik International Airport from, from the south, and if they look to east, they can see this, all those, all those fissures. 
And uh, in fact, this peninsula is, uh, it is the youngest part of Iceland. Um, it is a land that is uh, very much just in the making and uh, underdeveloped as such. And a living laboratory for uh, geologists. So, uh, since this is just the first chapter in 800 years, uh, I know that the science community in Iceland is and elsewhere is uh, just uh, all fired up over this because uh, this is uh, such a large event as to learn from. That we on this youngest, on this youngest uh, part of uh, Iceland, which is one of the youngest countries in the world, so 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 to see Mother Earth in the making, literally, is uh, giving them a, a very good insight into this. So I know that uh, they are doing a lot of work in that. It would not surprise me if we would see a lot of geology students come to Iceland next summer. Mm -hmm. We have another question that you might want to weigh in on. Um, a person is traveling to Iceland this summer and they have a reservation at the Blue Lagoon on August 21st. How would you consider whether or not to go there at that time? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I would, uh, I would, yes, this is a hard one. Um, this is actually hard to say. I would say at this moment, uh, I would be pretty easy because uh, this is moving away from the Blue Lagoon. And uh, as we see, Sundanjúka craters and the end of the yellow line to the right, that is where the earthquakes are now. They are lining up there. So we see, and it started <clears throat> at the other end of it. So we, what is so remarkable is that we can see those dikes, those lateral dikes, just form through the extensive net of seismometers they have around and the inside satellite data. So they have been following this uh, dike in the forming uh, almost from Eldwork craters. And for a while, we were under the impression that Eldwork craters would be, the, would be the place this time. And uh, I flew over there and, and took, uh, took plenty of videos. Then it started to move to the northeast. And... Uh, it's up now by Sundanuka craters, so, so the risk is, uh, I would think it's decreasing, but then we think of it logically, this is, this is just magma, liquid magma coming from huge depth at, at huge temperature, and, and it is trying to find the easiest way up. And the easiest way up is along those uh, fissures form, uh, one would uh, reckon. And uh, our experts have warned us that an eruption might actually come up by, this, uh, uh, by the northernmost part, uh, northerly on the, on the peninsula. So we don't get, however, all the explanations I would like to see from them. Uh, I think our journalists would do often a more job in, 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 in squeezing some information from them. But uh, one of them, a uh, fine expert, said that that might just be the place uh, up north on the peninsula. And that was, what I think he meant is that those fissure swarms that, that you see here, where the land is broken in the, every, always in this direction, that the magma would find its way somewhere through, through, through that fissure swarm. But uh, I see the earthquakes, however, they have stopped here. And uh, they have actually started again around uh, here today, uh, which was uh, pretty odd because uh, 
the dijk that formed Antermont Kaelir and went under Faradarsvall, where the eruption took place, it stopped here. So I'm trying to figure out, is it another, is it another uh, source that is uh, pressuring on, on, on this place now? But this is also odd, because uh, uh, from last year, we had the same story. It was uh, uh, Mount Thorbjörn moving there at Sundanjoka craters, and then Mount Kaler took off, uh, which was the source of the, the, the magma intrusion that finally came up under Mount Faradarsa. So there I'm trying to figure out uh, are those two separate volcanic systems or is it uh, one system indeed? And this is one of the questions that uh, I want to ask one of, the, one of our experts when I, when I have the time to. Because this uh, this is so this is so odd how this is all playing out, and uh, I think um, we might just as well see this. Uh, I, I think we can expect almost anything. This swarm that we have by uh, Blue Lagoon, it might fade out, and it is actually fading out. The land uplift by Mount Thorburn has stopped, uh, or so they reported uh, like uh, five days ago. But since then, we got 24 hours with 250 earthquakes, and they stopped as well. So it was just a short cycle there. But uh, as we are looking at it now, it is just as watching a, well, might be a disaster movie in the making. <laughs> but... We are looking at something unfolding that uh, we have never seen before. Uh, we know a whole lot. Our experts are very good at uh, our very better known, known uh, regions. And uh, I think we have very good experts. And, uh, uh, but I think that uh, they don't have the history. They don't have the they don't have the examples to work from, to uh, figure out better where it's going to come up. So like it is now, I think the only word that describes it today would be anything goes. I think, I think that is, is more, more or less it. And, and if I would ask an expert, I'm sure that he would reply in, in some way like that that uh, anything goes, we, we just can't say what is going to happen. But this yellow line is, it doesn't look good. And, and uh, I would not, I would not uh, throw away the booking in a blue lagoon. I think, uh, I think it's too early for so, but uh, I would stay tuned and uh, follow up as close. And uh, I think, I don't see that the Blue Lagoon itself, that there are any old vents or such, uh, just there under it. It is also a huge construction. But uh, it is very close by potential lava flow. So, um, but uh, this is, uh, we can at least say that this is, uh, most likely the absolutely hottest tourist spot in Iceland this summer. Oh, uh, I was going to ask a question myself. Would you, if, if we could lift on this map, lift the surface off, how big were, were these magma chambers? There are no magma chambers under there. Oh, there are no. Okay. No. These are, these are what make the peninsula so strange that is that there is no central volcano. Those are all just uh, uh, pipelines directly down to the mountain. And uh, such uh, volcanoes, they tend to go on for years. And uh, we have uh, extremely beautiful uh, circular mountains of such that have been loaded up uh, that took maybe 50 years to... to, to, to uh, uh, come off the ground with constant eruption for the whole time. 
So this is the pump that goes all the way to the mantle or some magma chambers uh, above there. But, uh, but uh, this is just so interest, interesting phenomena. And I don't think that, uh, yeah, we might see something in Hawaii of, of this kind, but, uh, but uh, there are 20, yeah, there's a 20 shield volcanoes. And when we look here, uh, this is a shield, we, we cannot see the 3D, but this is a shield volcano. We can see it around it, it's completely circular. This is one of the magma pumps. And then near Grindavik, we have another, uh, uh, just above the town, uh, this one. Uh, it's an old one. And, uh, and uh, those formations uh, bear the witness of uh, for how long time this goes on. So those eruptions are not violent. They are, uh, they are uh, just uh, extremely efficient and they can go on for uh, extremely long time. And uh, Mount Faradal Shabl is in fact just uh, one such uh, formation. And uh, we can see the the gentle slopes from it, from the Keplavik road on the way to Reykjavik. And, uh, but it is, however, if you look around it, there are some valleys and such that, uh, that it doesn't have this uh, total beauty, this beautiful shape yet. But uh, we were for a while, and there were uh, speculations among, amongst uh, geologists that the uh, the eruption up there might uh, go on for years, but we were in for a phenomena that would just uh, go on for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years or something. So they expected that just as well. So that was mentioned as one of the options. But then again, uh, this just, uh, even though Iceland is so active and we have fine experts, this region is... Uh, just a whole new scenario for them, so they are uh, using this to 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 learn from it, and and uh, and uh, I'm sure that we will get uh, more uh, information as as time moves on. But uh, overall, with the peninsula, uh, Iceland, one of the youngest countries in the world. The Reykjanes Peninsula, youngest part of the Iceland, and then you see the satellite photo, and this is just a lava layer after layer after layer after layer, and uh, there are no proper mountains as we know them, and this is all so young, or, and uh, what were I worry the most now is that. Uh, there is so much uh, action taking place near Grindavik. This all starts there. And I'm thinking, okay, we got away with it last year. This moved up to Faradarshjall, where the eruption took place. We are hoping to get away with it this year. Then we have two years of the 200 years to come. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and and then I'm thinking, as I was telling a friend the other day, I was saying, I am not sure if this town will be there in maybe 40, 50 years. We don't know what will go on. And uh, maybe this is just uh, the beginning. And we can see on this satellite photo, we can see some of the, some of the layers that are, that are involved. And uh, here we are above the town. And uh, given that the eruption would come up from Sundanhuka craters, this, uh, this is uh, the potential pathways. And uh, as I was talking about in my last video, we might have to sacrifice this little bay and those farmhouses in this area. There is a hill here and uh, to build, uh, to build uh, uh, barriers here to direct the flow into the sea, away from the town. So that is one of the options that we have today, or to uh, uh, try, yeah, try to divert the, the lava flow if it would come down there. 
So I would think that those craters are the worst case scenario. But if you look at this town, you know, it's just a town built on lava field and, and, and fissures. And uh, there would no, we would never build a town in such locations today, never. And uh, this- Gilf, Gilfi, um, we just have uh, about five minutes left now. And I, we did have one other question here, wondering if you, um, if you have photos of the Geldinga Dollar volcano, um, how far did the uh, lava flow go? And was Grindavik in danger at that point when, when that volcano was going? We can see, um, can you see the right side of the photo? Because I got your, only got your, uh, yeah, okay. We can see uh, just about up to Keltigadale from here. And uh, I would have to do some, I'm not sure, if, I have so large collection, it takes me a while to browse through it. But uh, the answer is yes, there was a real risk last year. And we are talking about the same path as here. But the Celtic Atelier also took place up here. And uh, there was made a barrier up there. I have a 20 minute long video online about uh, Grindavik and uh, when I was flying up there over those barriers. And uh, if the Celtic Atelier would, eruption would have uh, continued, this is also the path that the lava could have taken. So they did plant barriers there back then, uh, but they did not go all the way to making them, but, but they have uh, picked the locations, they have, uh, they have contacted all owners of heavy machinery on the peninsula. So in case of an emergency, like uh, let's say that eruption starts now, it won't take them long to get the tools there, and uh, there are mines there to get the gravel and such very close by. But this was a risk, but for that to occur would have, I think, Keltinga uh, Dalera the rate that it was pumping, it would have had to take some years, maybe, yeah, several years to, to get enough to threaten a town. So the town was not at so much risk then. But could have been if it has lasted for long since those shield volcanoes are known for, for this. and, and uh, and then we think, you know, yeah, how is this peninsula going to look like in 50, 100 years? Will there be new mountains there? Will there be a complete shield volcano that's enlarged the peninsula out to the sea? And, and, and what, what can we expect? And we have even one of the threats that we have, and we need to... But what I want to mention is that through the peninsula, we have a risk of a 6.0 or 6.5 magnitude earthquake soon. And the uh, sulfur mountains, we got it here, and you can see the seismic zones. And there is this, uh, there is this, uh, 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 let's say, the sulfur mountains is the thickest landmass on the peninsula every 50 years or so. The tectonic plate movements uh, uh, lead to an earthquake up to magnitude uh, 6.3, 6.5, according to our experts, last time in 1969, there before in 1929. And uh, the fire department Reykjavik just warned the residents the other day to put uh, precious things down and, and to box them down and better don't break because they expect an earthquake to take place up to magnitude six uh, within 20 kilometers away from the city, from the sulfur mountains. So if an earthquake of that magnitude will strike, or uh, should I say then, because uh, those are, this is, in, in that, this is just, this is going to go on, but we just don't know when. That mm -hmm. might uh, turn on the whole peninsula. It might uh, fire everything up. It might open some channels 
uh, boreholes uh, in geothermal power plants might uh, open or close and, and uh, vents open up, like by the hot uh, Kreisvik hot springs. Uh, we got a new hot spring there after the 1929 uh, earthquake and a lot of changes, changes in, in, the, in the region. And uh, we got an earthquake uh, uh, by the boundaries of this area, uh, little under five just the other day. So they are telling us to get prepared, you know, but uh, not even, not just having have this risk, it's this as well. And, uh, and we are not just talking about, uh, uh, if we take it from west, here we have the plate boundaries where it started, we can get offshore eruptions around here. We can get uh, eruptions in this belt here uh, by Geldingandalit. Then we have a separate volcanic system there. There is a pretty good land uplift now, so it's getting ready for something there. There is a magma intrusion there. We've got strange earthquakes on the uh, Lake Clevervat lately, uh, mostly connected to the, I would reckon it's connected to the tectonic plates. Then we have sulfur uh, mountain earthquake waiting for us. And then they have mentioned, a geologist mentioned the other day that uh, we might see during this uh, chapter that is going to hit us, see an eruption up in a place called Heidmark, which is here, and you can see the lava here, uh, pretty near to the city, or in Blaufjöll or the Blue Mountains around here. And there is a shield volcano up here that uh, when it erupted, uh, it sent a stream of lava completely through the city and out to the sea here. So the scale of it. So, so then we have the only central volcano in the, in the neighborhood, which is here by uh, Thingvellir. And the fissures swarm that everybody knows that runs through Thingvellir there that land dropped down. This is a huge volcano. Uh, with the, according to what I've been reading, the two magma chambers, and there are always some movements going on there. The magma there is at, is at little depth, and it would uh, it would not surprise anybody if the old Henkel would uh, wake up because there was a serious magma intrusion there, like uh, I think it's less than twenty years ago, and everybody was 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 on their toes if it would if it would blow. So, is uh, Reykjavik well located? <clears throat> no. <laughs> Well, uh, Gelfi, I think we've run out of time here <laughs> now. So we'll, we'll end on that very, very happy note. Um, thank you for the wonderful presentation. And thanks to everyone who uh, asked such interesting questions today. Um, before we close, I just want to remind everyone that the recording of this presentation will be available on the INLUS website at uh, INLUS.org. There you will also find many other interesting video presentations as well as our quarterly newsletter. Uh, the most recent newsletter has just been posted on the website and includes an event listing of local Icelandic club activities. Check it out. There may be an upcoming event in your area. Again, thanks to Gilfie for the fine presentation and be sure to check out his YouTube channel by searching for just Icelandic. Thanks for joining us on this presentation and have a wonderful rest of your day.